And my name is Olivia Morgan. I am a customer engineer here at Looker and within Google Cloud. And today I'm going to talk to you about data monetization, um, but more specifically about how you can boost your product and add new revenue streams um, with that data. Um, so to start it off with a simple agenda, I want to talk a little bit about data monetization and just more specifically how we define it here at Looker and why it's so important within the industry. Um, the, most of the presentation today is really going to focus on two pieces. It's going to be direct monetization and indirect monetization, the difference between the two, and really why you should have a strategy for both. Um, and then we'll wrap up the presentation today by walking through a couple um, product tier examples and ways that you can think about employing this within your products today. Um, now, data monetization and data as a service has become a really large industry over the years. The way that we define it simply is data monetization through embedded analytics is the business model that drives revenue channels by leveraging data and analytics in a company's product and application and website. Um, frankly, we're collecting so much data today that it's really become an expectation that companies provide data back to their end users. Um, and in fact, according to a McKinsey Global Survey on data and analytics, they've mentioned that data monetization seems to correlate with industry leading performance. Um, and so I think a really important aspect of today is to understand how, where data plays a role in not only being competitive, but more specifically looking at what is your competitive advantage and what actually falls under competitive necessity. And so I think what we're seeing today within the industry is that data and having data as a part of your product or as a part of your strategy is really a competitive necessity. And the key here to make it uh, powerful for yourself and your company is to better understand how to tip that into being a competitive advantage. Um, now to start off with a more simple version of monetization here, um, direct monetization. This one is easier to conceptualize because essentially you're passing the cost on to your customers um, and you're literally charging access for uh, data or data features and you're creating direct revenue streams from your data. So you can think of this as a direct line item to your business. And I think the way that most folks or most customers I work with think of direct monetization um, is they immediately, uh, they immediately tune towards features. Um, what are the features that I can monetize uh, within this data and analytics product? You know, whether it's automation and scheduling, drilling, alerts, or data delivery. Um, and all of these are really powerful, but I think the, the most uh, powerful one and the one that skews more towards competitive advantage versus competitive necessity is the first piece in the upper left-hand corner, and that's package insight solutions. Um, the key here is not only, you know, are you delivering insights to your customer, but what insights are you delivering to your customers or to your end users that are differentiated, that are, that are unique? What are unique insights that you can deliver to them that nobody else in that in your industry can give them? Um, and so, you know, simply this could be access to different levels of data granularity. You might have, uh, you know, monthly or yearly access to to data, um, but you might want to increase that level of data granularity to, you know, weekly or daily. Um, dashboards and KPIs. When we think of dashboards and KPIs, not all dashboards are created equal. Certain customers will value certain dashboards and KPIs over others. So there's ways that you can even monetize just within the content that you're thinking of within the platform. Um, a really popular one when we're thinking about um, specific insights that you can deliver to your customers that's been increasingly popular is actually benchmark analysis. So um, this is the idea of understanding how you're performing versus your peers or how your customers are performing versus their peers. Um, and this can be a really powerful analysis to loop in, you know, behavioral analysis, benchmark analysis to help them understand within their industry where they're sitting um, and how they can be competitive. And so when we start to pair this with features, that's when you start to tip the scales to competitive advantage. Then we can say, you know what, with that benchmark analysis or that peer comparison or that churn analysis or that cohorting, let's go ahead and tag on automation and scheduling. Um, automation and scheduling is something that is asked for a lot within the customers that I work with. 
Um, and you can think of that not only as you know automating data to you know very general endpoints like email, um, but actually automating this data to to different endpoints entirely. Right? Are we sending this data to uh, different data storage for your customer? Are we actually delivering that data into a different component or a, a different application in which they would like to interact with that data? There's also the concept of drilling, right? If you want to give your customers access to different data granularity or more importantly, be able to ask the next question. Um, drilling is, is very important as well as alerting, right? I don't want to always dive into uh, an analytics application to get my insights. Your customers would like to be alerted for thresholds that have been passed or anomalies that they would like to um, uh, be aware of in that data. Um, and then all the way on the right-hand side, uh, the, this is the idea of access to insights. Um, access to insights is very powerful here because um, it allows you to not always have to think of what your customers want. Um, this is often thought of as um, a premium offering that, that customers will offer. Um, and this is the idea of ad hoc analytics and custom reports. So you know you might be giving your customers uh, you know static reporting or some sort of premium offering. Uh, but in order to get your customers to that premium tier and to get them to pay for additional analytical services, increasingly we find, um, and for those of you that are familiar with Looker, as most of you are probably Looker customers that are on the phone right now, uh, we find our customers actually embedding entire explore sections or report building sections into their application. And they offer that as their premium um, insights tier. Now, indirect monetization, Indirect monetization is not as straightforward. Um, this actually provides a little bit more, more ROI in general, um, and it's very common in the B2B and the B2C space. Um, like I mentioned before, data has become a really large buzzword in the business, and it has become a baseline for most products. So as a consumer and as a customer, if you don't see it, um, the product is not going to be as sticky. And so, when we're looking at metrics that typical customers track, things like customer acquisition, um, customer conversion, retention, engagement, adoption, um, these metrics become more powerful and are, are more driven, more and more these days driven by data. If I'm a customer and I'm interacting with your product, I'm more likely to be acquired or converted. If I see some sort of, and this bottom bullet is very important, proof of value, proof of your product's value that I'm interacting with. Um, one good example here is um, if any of you have used like a malware or a security software, um, most of the time it's running in the background. And the idea is that you can kind of set it and forget it. Um, but when your monthly subscription comes up, if you don't understand what value that product's providing, it's gonna be very easy to turn, turn it off. I don't need that monthly cost. Um, but oftentimes you might see pop-ups happen, right? When you're using your computer, it'll say, that uh, you know, 17 attacks were, you were protected against 17 attacks. And that's an example of proof of your product's value. Um, another good example here is uh, when you're shopping online specifically, you know, especially during the holidays, and you're on a product page and you can actually see how much product they have in stock. And sometimes you'll often see you know, how many people, how many other people have that product in their cart. And so that's data driving you to make a decision. That has, uh, I've definitely been um, a victim of that, definitely added a product to the cart and checked out for fear that I might not be able to get that size or get that product in time for uh, a holiday, right? Um, so that's a, a way that we can start thinking of data of indirectly monetizing. Um, not only does this help you maintain a competitive advantage, but it allows you to strengthen a competitive advantage. And it also ha uh, helps with brand recognition. Um, now, a personal uh, anecdote of indirect monetization uh, is uh, during quarantine, right? I picked up a new hobby. I picked up a running hobby. Um, and initially, when I picked up this running hobby, I was using the free Apple Health app to see specific statistics, how far I was running, how long I was running. Um, but as I continued to engage with that data, I got more interested in the data. So that data kind of made, uh, made it more sticky. And I wanted to know more about um, my pace. I wanted to know the routes that I was running. I wanted to know more health, health metrics. Um, 
And so what I did is I had a friend recommend the Nike Runners app. And so after downloading the Nike Runners app, this was a free app. I now had access to more and more of that data um, that I was looking for. And so this allowed me to continue to engage with running. It allowed me to understand the value that running was providing me. But more importantly for Nike, I was now a consumer on their platform. Again, I wasn't paying for the data. I was getting the data for free. But within that platform, I was getting ads for uh, ads for Nike gear. Um, and eventually, um, I was getting discounts for Nike gear when I hit certain benchmarks. And what did that data cause me to do? It caused me to buy those new Nike running shoes. And eventually, I was running around the Bay Area with my Nike tank top. And I was uh, a full brand billboard for those guys, right? So this is a good example of direct, uh, indirect monetization uh, is not only being a direct revenue stream, but being um, an enhancer to convert and acquire those customers. Um, I'm sure there's more than a couple of you on the phone that own Pelotons or engage uh, with the, the stationary bike world uh, that is now Peloton. And this is a really good example of a company that has taken a hardware like a bike uh, and has used data to, uh, to create that stickiness of product, right? Um, when people are... see their statistics, they can see their health, that gets them on the bike again and again. Same examples that we have here with customers like Dyson, where you have an air purifier and I can see how dirty the air is and how clean the product has now made the air. Um, or with companies like Spotify, many of you are probably familiar with uh, their rap series where at the end of the year, you get insights into the type of listener you are, the types of genres you listen to most, uh, and then they'll generate a playlist for you to re-engage on the platform. Um, so again, indirect monetization is really the idea that you're proving that your product is making a positive impact on, on your consumer's life. Um, now, when we think of a monetization spectrum in your product, this is just an example now that we know uh, a baseline of what direct and indirect monetization is. Um, this is just an example of how you can start to think of really the value that you're delivering to your customers. Um, so when we look on the left-hand side, if we're thinking of um, very simple dashboard and reporting as low value, and if we go all the way to the high value um, of data exploration of self-service, we can start to think of monetizing uh, your product in these different ways. You can also think of this as kind of a bronze, silver, and gold tier of analytics and how you might think of structuring this. Um, on the left-hand side with dashboards and reporting, this is gonna be your periodic reporting, um, often weekly or monthly. And typically this is uh, starts off as static or light interaction. So this might be a dashboard uh, or report that you're sending. This might be, be via PDF or might, this might be via a portal. Uh, where your customers can log in and take a look at that data. Very light lift. Um, now, when we get to the second tier, operational analytics, this is the idea where you're taking that data uh, and those data products, and you're maybe taking an iframe of that information, and you're actually embedding it into your product uh, or your analytics offering that you've created for your customers. And so this gives customers a viewer a, a more a unique view of real-time anal analytics, alerting. You can see updates. Um, and this is those advanced embedding techniques where you're actually blending the iframe. And perhaps you're also incorporating Looker's API. And then all the way to the right-hand side of the screen, that's data exploration. So if we think of this as your gold or premium offering, this is that self-service aspect. This is that embedded explore that is unique to Looker. And it allows your users and your customers to explore and ask their own questions of the data. Um, I've seen many customers start off by embedding Looker's Explore to understand what customers are looking for, um, what insights they're after, um, and perhaps maybe using our data API to create a simplified Explore environment when you, where users can add a couple of KPIs, a couple of filters to create their uh, their own self-service interface. So it's really up to you how you would like to start this. Um, but when we think of kind of bronze, silver, and gold, we like to think of it as kind of static reporting, more operational analytics with iframes and embed. And then lastly, that full explore um, embed experience on the right-hand side.
Now, when we are thinking of the tier offerings and what to monetize, um, this is the, the last slide that I'll go through. Um, and what I really wanna show with this slide is to help you walk through how you should think of free versus premium um, and how that breaks out with the dashboards, the operational analytics and the data exploration. And so when we start with the dashboard and reporting that free version, um, we can think of this again as descriptive reports. Um, these descriptive reports uh, might be data that is specific to a customer, right? And this is, it's good to think of this as free because this is that sticky portion. This is that engagement that you're looking uh, to get from those customers for the, from those end users. And so that might just be data about the customer. But when we get to our premium model, that might be data with uh, about the customer, then blended with um, some public data sets, then blended with some proprietary analytics that you've uh, uncovered, things like behavior reports and benchmarking that you can offer to those customers. Operational analytics, um, we can look at this as you know downloading a monthly report um, but for your free version, but when you get to your premium version, that might unlock scheduling of reports. Um, that might unlock not only monthly reports, but actually weekly and then daily reports. So the ability to, to get to that granular data to be able to ask the next question um, and then also alerting, right? And we can think of alerting not just as sending an email to your inbox, but we can use uh, Looker's Action Hub API to um, provide really powerful alerts, right? This might be alerts directly as an SMS or a text message to alert those customers. And then lastly is that data exploration, like I mentioned, that ad hoc analytics um, to the ability to share those ad hoc results. Um, this really provides the, the full spectrum uh, of data usage for your customer. Again, that's that premium, that gold standard tier offering. Um, and that's the way that we like to think of, of how you can monetize your data within Looker. So we started with the direct monetization, that bottom line skew. We moved on to indirect monetization. Um, and then we kind of followed up with ways that you can think of free to premium offerings. Um, but I will go ahead and wrap up my portion of the presentation right now. I really appreciate you all tuning in and listening.